For a while, we're in the same conference in the Big East. Now it's a Big East ACC matchup, and it starts off with the Cardinals controlling the ball. They last played on Sunday on the road against Pitt. Won 77 to 53, played some incredible defense in that first quarter. There's a three-point shooter, Krizlin Carr, doing just what we said she could do. First shot is in for the cards. You called it, Mike. A couple of players you can't leave open behind the arc on this Louisville team. She is number one to watch out for. Anissa Morrow can hit the three. First attempt goes off, and here comes Carr. Little stutter step, pulls back. Offline, the rebound goes tomorrow. Quickly ahead to Kendall Holmes, who's running the lane. And we're going to see that all night from both of these teams, Mike. Both of them love to get the tempo going. They're high-scoring teams, so buckle in to see these women run up and down. Yeah, Louisville scores 77 points a game. DePaul scores 80 a contest. DePaul last played here at home on Sunday. They beat Georgetown by nine. Really balanced effort. They had five players in double digits. Nice defense there by Olivia Cochran, forcing the turnover. And obviously when you play against DePaul, your first order of business is how are we going to defend Anissa Morrow? And on this play right here, you see Cochran fronting, not allowing the pass to get inside. Van Lith will take her first shot. Rebound to the Demons. Bounce pass was to an unprepared Anissa Morrow. Meanwhile, on the other way, it's the other 24, Morgan Jones for two. And you have to be so careful with the ball. I mentioned the game that Louisville last played, how great their defense was. They allowed zero field goals the first eight minutes of action on Sunday. Darian Rogers from deep. Darion Rogers has no limit when it comes to range. She has the greenest of green lights. You have to be ready to contest her a couple feet behind the arc. Amazing that that talented a player is the second best player on her team. Cochran spinning inside. Well, I hope you like a lot of scoring because we're seeing it early on. And I think that's going to be a strength of Louisville all night. They definitely have a size advantage as good as Morrow is. She's just 6'1 inside. Cochran, 6'3". Morrow, the long two. I mean, there is no spot on the floor she does not feel confident shooting. Yeah, and in this game, that mid-range may work well, as we just mentioned, the size differential. She may find more success stepping out a little bit. Well, give and go inside. Cochran with the left hand. Yeah, how about the interior passing there? Rogers with the pick for Morrow. The three ball is blocked by Dixon. Here comes Louisville. Dixon from one end to the other cannot finish out of bounds. Not just blocking it out of bounds, but keeping it in bounds, bringing it up the floor herself. Morrow again inside, double teamed. Cochran comes away with it. Van Lith on the run. Cochran's getting a lot of shot attempts early on and making the most of it. A quick six points. When she caught Anissa Morrow sleeping. It was just a, a simple hesitation, little ball fake, one dribble right around Morrow. Inside for two and one. That is two fouls on Liz Dixon at this point of the game, but she does not check out of the game at this moment. She's still in. person who did come into the game is Nyla Harris, the freshman who knocks down her defender, no whistle. Rogers, a nice crossover, beautiful block. Morgan Jones transferring over to this program from within the conference, Florida State, an all defensive player in the ACC in her time at Florida State, just elevating up for that block. Rogers will take a deep one. Rebound to Carr, and there's a whistle. I mean, that's the thing. When your bench is used so little, how much do you have to worry about the fourth quarter being run down? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's something that they've been able to succeed as Morgan Jones. We saw her with the block on the other end and just gets in. And now with the steal. 
More turnovers forced by Louisville. Krizlin Carr for three, her second of the day. And that's where she thrives in the transition off of a turnover. You have to mark where she is, especially behind the arc. 7-0 run for Louisville. Another turnover. Carr all alone. Doug Bruno has seen enough. Nisa Morrow, fadeaway shot, hits the front iron. Carr with the board. The freshman, Harris. Certainly couldn't have asked for much of a better start in this game. Kiki Rimmer is in the game to give a breather to Anissa Morrow, but the shot goes up. That is a long two. Darian Rogers strong inside. Van Lith inside. The ball is stolen away by DePaul. Morrow finally hits a basket. They'd missed eight of their last nine before that one. I'm not sure how she got that one to fall. DePaul's one of seven from three-point range. Cochran inside, draws a whistle. It's an offensive. Inside tomorrow, splits some defenders and draws the whistle. Her sophomore season is just finding creative ways to get to the rim. Morrow only a 59% free throw shooter. Van Lith left alone in the corner. Fight for the ball comes down to DePaul and they can hold for the last shot if they want. Instead, Rodgers finds an open rimmer who misses inside. Morrow cleans it up, swatted away by Jones and out of bounds. What a block from Morgan Jones. Just coming in here, and she does it so well without fouling. She allows Morrow to get really half a step, a step in front, and blocks it from behind. No chance for contact. Three blocked shots by the Cardinals' defense this first quarter. Morrow not interested in draining the clock at all. You just want to be really vertical and straight up against Morrow because a lot of times she knows she's going up with it. But it seems to be more of, listen, if you see Elaine, go get it with her. Yeah, I mean, you talk about maybe that becoming a part of her game where she could still grow the IQ, but he, he trusts her to go and get a bucket. He does have extreme trust. And he said he wants his players to have the freedom to make some mistakes. Meanwhile, Russell with a three at the buzzer. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be smart. Like I said, make sure the right people are taking the looks. Make sure it's in the rhythm of the offense. Darian Rogers to Anaya Peoples. Open look for Kendall Holmes rattles out. That was a good look, though. Yeah, that was in the rhythm of the offense. Drive and dish just didn't get it to drop, but a better look. Van Lith passes on the three, misses on the two, and Peoples has it. Morrow wants the ball inside. Defended by Nyla Harris. Stops, pops, drills it. Under-recruited, goes on to become the national freshman of the year. What a pass from Carr inside. Harris flips it out all the way around for an open look for two, and that's good for Morgan Jones. Teams aren't going to have it all going in, in early December. Right. They started the season number seven in the country and were ranked for the first four weeks, but have not been ranked the last three weeks. Like you mentioned, it does feel they're starting to get that rhythm, the four-game winning streak they're on. Yeah, have been really impressed. And it's worth pointing out, they do have the, the four losses this year, and they had only five all of last year. And in recent years, it, it may seem like... The building is burning down with a couple of November losses, but Jeff Walls is way too good of a coach. Morrow comes right down to her teammate, Jory Allen. Van Lith. Only two points. Again, for Lule to be up this comfortably with her only having two. That's two more, though, her foot was on the line. And I think that's a great sign for Louisville because Haley's averaging 20 a game. There's going to be nights where she's off or a little fatigued because she plays so many minutes, maybe in foul trouble. You want to have a couple of people that you can count on to get you 15 or 20. Largest lead of the night for Louisville. Anaya Peoples drives on Van Lith. Van Lith got a little part of the ball. Here comes Carr quickly the other way. 
but trying to find her teammate, loses it, and it's a turnover. Nine straight three-point attempts for DePaul have gone awry. Morrow in the lane travels. And Haley Van Lith sliding in to create that help, forcing the charge, and Issa Morrow's gonna have to get a little bit more creative in her array of moves because Louisville is really locked in on that matchup. Yeah, you're right. They called that an offensive foul, not a traveling. Meanwhile, quick shot the other side is in for Marissa Russell. Rogers trying to force the action and does. Another tough finish. A lot of these DePaul buckets have been contested. Jones through the lane. Offensive foul. The feed inside to Peoples with Van Lith on her. Van Lith, what a defensive performance, but a nice second effort there by Peoples. Van Lith inside has two players to pick from, and Harris. Rogers does not get the pass. It's stolen away by Russell, who finishes for two. And that's really one of the worst type of turnovers you can have, is a pass back up to the top of the key deflected, because it's almost a guaranteed layup for the other team. Rogers inside, forcing it. That's worked for her throughout the afternoon. Yeah, Rogers is going to really have to step things up here the last couple of minutes of the half with Morrow on the bench. And Kiki Rimmer might have gotten away with a little push in the back there. Rogers wanted that three. You could see it when she hit the logo. Comfort and joy are put on the bench for a moment. Inside feed, curled up and in, and she's going to the line. Olivia Cochran. Uses her size advantage, uses her strength, that she's been fired up in this game, Mike. Yeah, she had six points early on to help Louisville get that early lead. Let's see if they can recapture that momentum. Feed inside is a tough pass into a double team, and they're going to call it a, a tie-up. That's a quick call. Van Lith will drive and kick out to Russell. Russell has made an impact on this game. She's now got 11. Yeah, this is a really high efficiency offensive team. Multiple options, some players really starting to find rhythm. Kendall Holmes misses the 13th, pardon me, misses the 11th out of 13 attempts from deep for DePaul. Van Lith fakes out her opponent and a nice smooth two-pointer. Van Lith is just so fundamental. Jab step, one dribble. They're being held to 26 as we approach halftime. Van Lith's drive falls to DePaul. Chance for the last shot is in the hands of Darian Rogers. She gets a good look, and it's good! All right, so what does DePaul need to do differently in these next 20 minutes? Well, I think they need to adjust how to how Louisville is defending Anissa Morrow, which is to throw double and triple teams at her on the catch. Morrow has been trying to force up some looks. When you're triple team, you should have a couple teammates open. So I think she needs to pass out and repost. Rebounded shot from Liz Dixon is up and in. So does Morrow need to change her offense or does DePaul need to change the way they use her? I think she needs to be a little bit smarter in reading the defense. She reads it there just fine. Louisville dominated points in the paint in the first half. 22 to 10 advantage. And they're trying to stretch it again here. That attempt goes off from Morgan Jones. She fights for the board and will commit a foul. So much untapped potential left with Morgan Jones. And if Louisville could find a consistent second score to elevate, boy, that could change the way they feel about this team. That shot is good from deep. Kendall Holmes, the three-point shooter, hits one. There is a battle underneath with her and Olivia Co uh, Cochran. Yeah, and what's also helping is the perimeter players are pinching in. Haley Van Lith pinching in there so she couldn't get the pass in. Carr with a fantastic drive to the lane and a bounce pass to Dixon. Morrow with a quick catch and shoot. Rebound to Carr again, whose stats continue to pile up. Jones running the floor! Anaya Peoples, that's a long two. Rebound Morrow. This rebound to Williams.
car driving the lane. Found a hole and went right through it. And when the ball has moved for DePaul, it feels so far away from the basket all game long. Like there with Holmes, and she's fine doing that for her second three-pointer. Cochran on the baseline with an air ball. Rogers looking for Morrow inside. Double teamed. Boy, that's a tough shot. Very tough. It was, again, well defended. Van Lith knew that the lob was coming, stepped in to help, and Morrow able to shoot over the top of that double. But that's a better look for her instead of throwing up a three when you're shooting 20%. Krislin Carr doing everything she wants today. She just continues to be so impressive. She's impacted every aspect of this game and reads the defense and, and what's there. Should I take the shot or should I give it up? Really impressed by her. Great feed tomorrow. Cannot roll it in, but we'll go to the line. You mentioned earlier, last year the offense didn't have to go through Anissa Morrow. Veteran guards last season and Sonia Morris, Lexi Held. DePaul showing some little bit of life. They're actually outscoring Louisville here in the third quarter, but it feels like every time we say that, something for Louisville goes their way. This time it's a missed shot by Van Lith. Peebles drives and gets another foul. Maybe something DePaul can do to get back in this game. Louisville's only shot one free throw today, but the, the fouls are piling up for the Cardinals. And the free throw line is typically somewhere where Louisville excels, That's one right. of the best percentages I've seen from a team this season, men's or women's, 77%. Here's another turnover for DePaul and another opportunity. Morrow inside, triple teamed. Forces up a shot with her left hand. Williams, no. And the ball is saved by the Blue Demons. A three-pointer here would cut the deficit to single digits. Instead, Peoples with a two. Demons on a run. Carr from deep. Rebound to Allen. Here's that opportunity in a game, right? If you want to get back in it, you have to make a nice run and do a great run. Darian Rogers does just that, and she'll head to the line. What's most impressive about that is Darion Rogers is known for being a three-point shooter, has knocked down a couple from behind the arc in this game, but she's not settling for the three. As a team, DePaul has been much more aggressive. In the last couple of minutes, Darion Rogers takes it off the dribble. The bench is loving this moment. The free throw is good, and the game hasn't been this close since it was 22 to 14. Now, if you're DePaul, you want to end on a strong defensive note here, not allow Louisville to get this lead back up before you head to the fourth quarter. Ten unanswered points for the Blue Demons. Baseline. It is pure for Liz Dixon, who's been a nice performance this third quarter after barely hearing from her in the first half. Oh, Peebles trying to do too much. She's on the ground, and that's a tie-up. And that's just tough. It, you want to be smart there. Now a jump ball gives Louisville a second opportunity to score. Carr will bring it up. Only 12 points this quarter for the Cards. And it'll stay that way. What a performance by the home team to give. Only Holmes or Rogers should be taking threes and Anissa Morrow reading the defense to be able to be her most effective self inside. Morrow looking for position inside. DePaul also out-rebounded Louisville that quarter. Here's Morrow from deep. Rebound, fought for. Morrow comes away with it. A three ball from Rogers. And Carr has her 15th rebound of the game. That's just ridiculous. Five foot five. Building on her career high performance. This time, it's a rebound for Peebles. Rogers is running. Runs into Van Lith. The lead is down to only seven for Louisville. Van Lith taking charge. 
And what I would do is put a shooter on the side that Mara was posting up because then they can't help in on her as much. Dangerous pass saved by Peoples. Floats up a shot and it's good. Quickly on the other end, it was almost an open opportunity for Louisville, but a steal by Kendall Holmes. I would put Rogers. Well, Rogers is going to launch a deep one. I was going to say I'd put Rogers or Holmes. Van Lith baseline. Peebles is right there to take it away. And then a foul on Louisville. They're down only seven. That's an open look for deep from Peebles. I take it back. I had said a couple minutes ago that maybe Anaya Peoples wasn't the one that the defense is not really paying attention to on three-point line. Well, she makes a pay. Peoples has a dozen. This is a two-possession game. Van Lith from deep, what an answer. She's a star. Stars showing up in the big moments. Allen driving the lane for an easy two. I'm starting to see more role players step up here. Oh, the defense by DePaul is outstanding this second half. Specifically, Anaya Peoples, the Notre Dame transfer. She's doing it all. She's getting on the ball, on the ground for loose balls. Monster block from Peoples. Van Lith. The friendly bounce, touching all of the rim. She's awoken. Jones on Rogers, backing in, backing in. Rebound to Jones. Here comes Carr, all by herself, all alone for two. And Louisville has responded to stretch it back to nine. Morrow shot offline. Allen's shot will not go, but she'll head to the stripe. They're both the winningest head coaches in their school's program history. Star players in Morrow and Van Lith, and we have really seen Van Lith start to take over. It's the final non-conference game for both schools. Almost another turnover from Anaya Peoples. Van Lith driving. My goodness! And I was just noticing that Peoples was not leaving Van Lith. She goes into help and Lith, Van Lith takes advantage of it, but an answer from Darion Rogers quickly on the other end. Van Lith, the first team all ACC member. Cars had a brilliant game, 16 rebounds, and she can shoot! 17 points as Carr hits her third three-pointer of the day, and an immediate turnover by the Blue Demons. Really surprising, as we mentioned, a team that shoots 77% from the line just hasn't gotten there. Carr, tough pass out to Jones, who corrals it. And Peoples. Really having a great second half, doing a lot of little things for DePaul. Yeah, making winning plays, bringing the energy, especially on the defensive end. Morrow flicks up a three. And four Cardinals are in the paint to get the board. And we talked about smart shot selection for DePaul. I believe that's now one of six from three for the Blue Demons here in the fourth quarter. Louisville's second free throw attempt of the game coming right here from Haley Van Lith, who's an amazing free throw shooter, third best in the ACC, 88% on the season. Lefty drills them both. Through the first 13 games. What kind of offense will DePaul run? One of the reasons this game got close dates back to Rodgers at the end of the second quarter, drilling a three-pointer right at the buzzer. They were still down 17, but again, it could have been 20. Yeah, that was certainly a big swing. Peoples goes for the steal but misses it. Instead, Rogers comes away with it. Forcing turnovers has helped DePaul this fourth quarter. Peoples, a tough shot. The rebound. She is out. Nine points, couple boards. Gives her some pieces of advice. I thought DePaul was much more physical with her 
in the post and didn't just allow for one-on-one -on -one coverage, sent her double and triple teams. Peoples gets the deficit back to single digits. DePaul's starting to run out of time. Carr. Because no matter what you do, it seems that she's going to be able to break through it and make something happen. So that's an underrated aspect as well that she brings to this Cardinals team. This is quite a game from Chrislyn Carr. Never rush, never out of control. Rogers, the bounce pass to Peoples for two. Almost half of the turnovers Louisville's lost in this game have come in the fourth quarter. Seven of the 15. Definitely the highest percentage I've seen. A lot of teams this year in the 60s. Kentucky earlier this year, they made 33 free throws. Rogers, the hook shot, falls into a swarm of Cardinals. This is a Louisville team you mentioned. They made the Final Four last year. They've been to the Elite Eight four straight seasons. This year started the year number seven in the AP preseason poll. Had a few losses. South Dakota State was a loss. Van Lith at the 1-2 spot. Morgan Jones didn't really get it going offensively. But you see on paper the weapons and how they can all fit in together as they're continuing to develop this chemistry. And then at times they were really good on the defensive end as well. Jones. So the five game winning streak for DePaul is going to come to a close. The head coach still says we are a work in progress and they're not at, at full strength. Certainly not what they thought they would be at the beginning of the season. Yeah, they're missing two guards who they thought would be starting, but that's the reality now. And you have to figure out how do we get better? You obviously have two great offensive pieces and Rogers and Morrow, but I think where they could just continue to improve as a team is getting better at reading defenses and how to best help their teammates based on the coverages. They've got seven days off for the holiday. The next Wednesday, home against Providence. For Louisville, eight days off until ACC play starts.